the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you so much, Apostle. Thank you. Thank you to you and your dear wife. I love you with all my heart. Tonight, I believe that your life will never be the same. I believe this. Hallelujah. We have tabernacled for days feasting, learning, being pruned by the Spirit. And while you're standing very quickly, let me tell you five things that must happen every time you come to the house of God and every time God shows up in the midst of his people. Number one, every time you are in an atmosphere where the presence of God is, expect encounters. Amen. Hallelujah. An encounter is the name given to an experience, a supernatural experience that crystallizes the reality of God and the reality of the kingdom to you. An encounter the goal of encounters is to create conviction you cannot have conviction without encounters I know whom I have believed he says and I am persuaded it is not just that I believed him but I know whom I have believed number two expect transformation every time the presence of God comes transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience transformation number three when we gather like this expect an outpouring of miracles signs and wonders these miracle signs and wonders reveal the love of God and they reveal the power of God miracle signs and wonders are letters from God through men to creation I am still alive number four expect impartations Whenever you come to an atmosphere like this, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. That means you can take a grace you did not come with. This is true. And finally, expect fellowship, the mystery of human connections. Because you see, all blessings come from God through men to men. All, with no exception. All blessings come from God, but they come through men to men. So if God says yes, and on earth a man says no, the answer remains yes only in the realm of the Spirit. 
if it must be yes in the spirit and yes in your life God in partnership with men God can connect you to destiny helpers strategically in conferences like this so you have to be sensitive hallelujah are we ready for tonight my soul says yes says yes says yes my soul says yes says yes one more time sing with me my soul says yes says yes My soul says yes, says yes to the Lord. One more time. My soul says yes, yes to your power. Yes to breakthroughs. Yes to increase. Yes to a new season. My soul says yes. Please be seated for a few minutes. I'd like you to be very, very sensitive because I know that the power of God is strong in this place to heal, to deliver. But let me take a few minutes to just establish a few scriptures. I did tell us yesterday that without the proceeding word, the anointing has no ministry. The assignment of the anointing is to confirm the word. Hallelujah. For someone here, let me speak to you by the spirit. I truly sense not everybody, but there are a few people here who are wrapping up an old season and are about to enter new seasons in the spirit now of course what god says to one he says to all but there are specific people very specific people god has shown you in dreams the situations around your life have shown just help them this is a miracle service very specific people a season is coming to an end in your life and god is opening up new seasons sir are you a man of god what do you do? What do you do? I want to pray for you. The call of God is upon your life. Come. Can I pray for you? Stand up. What's your name? I'm looking at the name that Elijah was called in the New Testament is your name. What is your name? Elias. I want to pray for you. Please help us with a mic in, in case. I stretch my hands, my friend. Listen to me. In the name that is above all names, may you step into a new season. New season of power and a new season of grace. Madam, I release you to a new season. I'm seeing oil being poured on your head. Ah, caris colibra haske de balakusia. A new season. The Lord is telling me that in this season, He's also bringing you restoration. Super, I don't know you from anywhere, but I pray for you. May that anointing come upon your life and shift you to a new level. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I'd like for your heart to be opened. I'm not going to be teaching for too long just to establish a few things. There are people whose situations have called on heaven. God needs to step in and turn people's lives around. Hallelujah. That lady sitting by the edge, stand up. The one, yes, you. What's your name? Harus Kedila Kushida Balakuzia.
let it be a new season for you by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ Gabriel I'm hearing a name Gabriel 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 we'll get to the word Gabriel who is Gabriel I'm hearing a name Gabriel Just, just a moment or two. The man I'm talking about. What is your name, sir? Huh? I'm not hearing. Please come. Do you believe in miracles? Father, for the sake of your glory and your name, right now I stretch my hands. May your life and your end entire family take that grace now you step into a new season never to be the same in the name of Jesus Christ Exodus my spirit is fired up tonight Exodus chapter 3 Exodus chapter 3 Exodus chapter 3 please take Exodus chapter 3. We'll start from verse 1 just to establish one or two scriptures. The Bible talks about this man called Moses that he kept the flock of his father-in-law. Little did he know that there was destiny upon him that he was going to be the vessel that God would use to literally take the nation of Israel from bondage to a land flowing with milk and honey even though he did not get to the land but were interested in the fact that a young frail gentleman who ran away because he killed an Egyptian he did not know that the hand of God was upon his life and that one day he would be a savior and save about 2.5 million people thereabout and bring them from the grip of Pharaoh and even of Egypt. Verse 1 down to 15 tells us his encounter with the God of heaven, particularly when we go to verse 9, chapter, chapter 9, Exodus chapter nine from verse one we're coming back to verse three but please go to exodus chapter nine the lord said unto moses go in unto pharaoh by the time god was done with this man the weak man who was running away was now sent back to the place of his fears but not as the one who left he says go into pharaoh and tell him Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. They need to go and serve me, but you are constraining them. That Pharaoh of sickness, that Pharaoh of finances, he said, I want to visit them, but Moses, you go. Stand before Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go. They need to go and serve me. Poverty has kept them down. They need to go and serve me. Delay and retrogression has kept them down. It was for this instruction, the entire journey of Exodus chapter 3, the revelation, the encounters, was to prepare him for the times when he will go and talk to Pharaoh. Did you know that most of the things you've gone through in your life are simply preparatory classes because you are about to step into seasons where God is going to begin to send you to the business world, send you to ministry, send you to politics and governance, regardless the geography of your assignment 
the instruction is the same whenever you find pharaoh anywhere speak to him and say i have come representing heaven let my people go now listen to me this is very important because this is the primary assignment of a witness the bible tells us that we have a corporate mandate regardless the geography of our assignment john chapter 1 and verse 6 this is the corporate mandate of the believers the bible says there was a man hallelujah everybody says sent the man did not just arrive he passed through the womb of a woman you call him a south african god said he came from god he only passed through the physical territory of south africa when you when you try to identify that individual based on geography you can say he's a south african he's an african but when you want to trace this man according to his divine location and his destiny he's more than a south african he's more than an african the bible said there was a man no name the man was sent from god when he arrived the earth they gave that man a name they called him you But he came from heaven please pay attention with one singular assignment never forget this this is the corporate mandate of every believer whether you are a politician whether you are a businessman your corporate mandate is in verse 7 read with me believers one two read verse 7 one the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him his witness might believe this is it so while they call you whatever your name is that name is just a system of earthly identification the real name god calls you is witness he does not even call you a man of god he does not even call you a businessman i told you yesterday that our titles are simply a description of the geography of our assignment but he calls us witnesses who is a witness a witness is a validator of a claim the assignment of a witness is to make sure that the claims that are before the table are not negated by any other person in fact you do not need a witness until there is the contention to a claim is that true when you go to the court of law and you table a matter and someone is trying to oppose you the judge would invite you to bring a witness please listen very carefully the assignment of that witness is to prove the truthfulness of that statement and every witness is empowered with a token of truthfulness called evidence if you are truly a witness from God from heaven he does not let you go alone he grants you the capacity to prove that point he gives you an evidence are we together now the same came for a witness to the light that all men through him might believe so when the devil is ravaging creation and it looks like destinies are under siege what happens is that because of all those things satan uses men as a canvas to write a letter to god i doubt your might i doubt your power are you god indeed so God says, where are the witnesses? Because I need to reply. There needs to be a reply. When God sends you as a witness and gives you the evidence, when God uses you to lift people to break yokes and burdens, 
he has used you to reply are we together now the healing the miracles are replies from god i am still god seated on the throne but every time there are no witnesses god will always look like a fraud star every time there are no witnesses god will always look like a scammer every time there are no witnesses god will always look like he is not god it is the absence of witnesses across a territory that makes darkness look so powerful the bible says in john chapter 1 and verse 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not is it in your bible do you know the interesting thing about darkness even if a room has been dark for one year the moment you switch on the light the light does not respect the longevity of the darkness it becomes lightened immediately darkness of one year and darkness of two days and darkness of five years and darkness of 20 years they are all solved by the same instance light you would think that the longevity of the darkness would threaten the strength of the light when you switch on the light you will not know which of the room was dark first all of them come under the influence of that light So don't you tell me I've been in this condition for 30 years. Don't tell me I have been in this situation my entire family. Don't even say it just started last week. In light of the power of light, it doesn't really matter. If it is light indeed. Hmm. You are here working miracles. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you, we call you way maker, miracle walk, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Listen, by the privilege of God's grace, and I do not mean to sound arrogant, but by the privilege of the election of grace, I have spent my life literally watching the manifest power of God over lives, over territories. I know miracles are real i know that god can move and shift systems within a moment now please hear me as mighty as god is he will always use men to achieve his purposes you have to understand this the bible says and by a prophet the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. He was the one who brought them. But the agency, the vehicle was a prophet. He says, and by a prophet was he preserved. We have come tonight to give God an opportunity to give us visitations. Visitations over our lives. Now listen, in as much as we do not serve God because of miracles, because of signs and wonders, we love him more than that. But can I tell you, he's loving enough to be attentive to our needs. When they camped with him three days, he kept teaching, 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 and the disciples said, these people are hungry, let them go. He said, no, this is not consistent with my character. I must take responsibility for their commitment. Feed them. How do we feed these people? You cannot tabernacle here. Leaving all the things that you have to do. Some of you have closed businesses. Some of you have made all kinds of sacrifices. The God that we serve is a loving God. The God that we serve is a powerful God. And tonight he has chosen by his wisdom to reveal himself as that all-powerful God. Listen, 
listen to me i i wish i had time i would have shared with you a few encounters especially from scripture and then in my own life i have seen the miracle power of god i have been in situations in my life where i needed the manifestation of god's power and i have seen him come through this god you see is dependable this god you see is reliable look up can i tell you something because of our human nature there is a way you can be so overwhelmed by the reality of your frustration your financial situation whatever it is that you may not believe you may say amen but somewhere in your heart you say look I, i've been I've, I've been here in such i've been here long enough in fact i did not even write my condition in the prayer request because i'm not sure if god can attend to me brothers and sisters if you being evil the bible says that means as evil as men are even terrorists take care of their families while they kill others that means he's saying that as evil and wicked as people are there is still a a part of them that can communicate compassion he said how much more your heavenly father so the proof of his fatherhood is his ease to release blessings to you Please, I want you to believe this because we're going to get into a very serious session right now. I want you to be dissatisfied. Everything that does not name the name of Christ in your life, be ready to wave it goodbye. Be ready to wave it goodbye. And insist that it waves you back. Are we together? There are many of us here under the sound of my voice. What will take one month to do will now take you 10 years to do. There is a spirit behind that kind of thing. Just help those under the anointing. My spirit is fired up. I have seen people, let me tell you this. You know that delays at work in your life when the only thing growing in your life is your age. Some of us are connected to men and women who can be used by God to lift us. They will watch you like this and promise you heaven and hell and go around and bless others and you stand there as though you are not covered by favor. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. Why do we need results in our lives? Don't you dare look down on the need for results. If your life does not produce results, your Christian experience will be frustrated. John chapter 15 and verse 8, here's what it says. Herein is our Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus teaching what we call the Beatitudes. When you read from verse 15 and 16, he says, let your light so shine before men. Not in heaven, not before angels, before men, that they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. John chapter 17 and verse 1, Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and prayed and this is what he said. Father, the hour has come. He says, glorify thy son that thy son may glorify you. If the sons in light are not glorified, God cannot be glorified. Let me tell you honestly, God is not glorified when believers are poor, broke, limited, frustrated, oppressed. Those things do not spell a good image of this God that the Bible talks about. And so when he comes to you, he comes to lift. He comes to tear down everything that mocks his integrity over your life. Are you blessed tonight? What should we expect tonight? Expect to be healed. What should we expect tonight? Expect to be delivered. All kinds of yokes and, and devilish things that have tied destinies down. I have been oppressed. I know what it means to be oppressed. Hmm. Did he not say the spirit of the Lord is upon me? 
for he had anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives to open up prison doors have you seen any physical prison with a man inside there are human beings moving physically but they are in prison open up those closed doors most of you have become an object of shame and mockery to yourself and all who know you they call you by all kinds of names and say you are there serving god praying fasting rolling on the ground there is nothing in your life that shows like god is alive and can i tell you that mockery has reached the heavens god is now saying i'm a warrior clear the road for me i want to have a holy convocation in the midst of my people it says the lord in the midst of thee is mighty so I'm, I'm saying this because in the next two three minutes we are going to pray and shake off unbelief shake off unbelief and say i believe i know i know that god can change my life i know that while i'm seated here god can begin to move over someone and that person will not have rest tonight until he calls me and says where have you been i have been looking for you then you know that this one is not the doing of man please believe what i'm telling you i'm not i'm not just this is not some i fear god i will not come here and waste your time you see let me tell you this it is seen to attempt to communicate a spiritual reality that is higher than the dimension of grace you have the bible says to minister according to the measure of grace difficult things that are supposed to be easy but there are people who sit you start a, a building project for years you are still at it yes you are still at it as if it's a course i hope you're not offended i'm challenging you because god is determined to visit you this night now please listen carefully please listen carefully can i be very honest with you under god primarily over 80 percent of the challenges of men listen carefully 80 percent or more of the challenges of men there are spirits and forces behind it find a way of believing that this is true he says the enemy has done this jesus clearly told us that the enemy has done this And so he has sent us and anointed us tonight and granted us the privilege of grace. I thought I'll be able to share a few things, but there's no time for that. I really want to maximize the time to do that which we have to do so that we'll finish on time and then you make for your coffee. But let me share with you one experience. I have spent my life in encounters, it is an election of grace the privilege of God's grace and I, I don't know if I shared it last when I was here but please pay attention when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me I was flat on the ground and he I don't know if he, his feet was on the ground or he was in the air I can't even tell you light at his brilliance splendor i could look at any part of him forever there i was like a dead man looking at this great god that preachers talk about all the time and i said my god what will preachers do when they see him when i saw him he didn't open his mouth to say anything to me and yet he was speaking to me this is a strange thing about spiritual encounters and he stretched forth his hand and light from him entered into my being light that ordinarily is like throwing a TV set inside a, a volcano it should disintegrate it in a moment how I did not die it will never tire me to say this is a miracle that I will ask him to help me explain when we get to heaven 
But from that encounter and that light, my life changed. I began to experience phenomenal levels of revelation, phenomenal levels of his power. And in one other encounter, listen very carefully. I saw people who were sick, people who were oppressed, all kinds of people. And it was as though, you know how a lockdown is, like a curfew. And I saw the people just lined up on the street. And I was broken. I said, I mean, who did this to these people? And then I heard a voice speak to me from heaven. That I should go and heal them all. And when I heard that voice, I said, this is it. I knew that that was true. I was worshiping the Lord and then the Lord comes to me to give me an encounter and he says my son from this day I give you my presence as a gift please listen carefully can you help me with a little volume and then my eyes are open and I see this being standing by me and I said who is this and he said, he will walk with you as you go to the nations. I said, what is his name? And he said, he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. I told you that I will explain to you what is responsible for some of these manifestations that you see. I cannot take credit for it. And every time I step into a place, he comes with that spiritual climate. To deliver, to heal, to save, to change, to lift burdens. That is the reason why you can hear that in a moment. Oh Jesus, the twinkling of an eye, an age-long captivity, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. I know. Now listen, please listen. I'm about to begin to minister to people. Just pay attention. I didn't used to walk very strongly in the prophetic. I had miracles and all of that. But one night, I was watching William Branham. An old video of his. And I said, look at this dear man. People persecuted him, misunderstood him because maybe towards the end of his life, things just changed like that. And while I was looking at him, I said, but this man feared God. He may have made mistakes, but this is a sincere man. All of a sudden, it was like something, a cold sensation from that laptop to my head. It started going down, right? My whole body within a period of 30 minutes. And after that, by the next meeting I went to, the heavens had opened. What, what, is, what is happening to me? I wasn't born with this. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekos, Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and make a path. The face of development, Lord.